Um, so, um, uh, if you could get the, fu- I mean, by the way, you, this question might not pertain to you because I would imagine a lot of people want to work with you, but if you could get the financing for any project, what would you make and why? Huh? Um, that's a great question. You know, I, I have, a, I have a backlog of ideas, things that I've been working on kind of in the margins and, and from time to time. And really it's not one thing, you know, I, I've been really lucky um, in the sense that I get to make these movies that are about something, you know, that, that, that have a message to them. And so I've been very fortunate. There's nothing that I've wanted to make that I haven't ultimately been able to make, you know, um, I'm also really, for whatever reason, I don't really know why I'm incredibly picky. And so when I, when I fall in love with something, I, f- I'm, I fall all in. And so, so, you know, uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, the, my magic wand, you're going to get to see over the next five to six years. Got it. I like, okay. Um, if you could go back in time to the first day of filming Dear Evan Hansen, what do you, what would you like to tell yourself on the first day of filming that you learned during the shoot? Um, I, you know, it's funny. I, I don't know if I could have <laughs> possibly given myself advice uh, on that first day because just the effect of being isolated for as long as we were all isolated, you know, from each other, but then from our families, I think, I think maybe what I would say is, look, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be okay. You know, just, just that fundamental thing. Cause it was scary day in, day out. Not only was it scary, like, you know, to go to work, I always felt so responsible for everybody and I was worried for everyone's health and safety, but I was also so worried about my family back at home um, that I think that it's just like, if I could crystal ball it, if I knew I'd go back and say, it's all going to be okay. Take a deep breath and just keep, keep moving forward. I can't imagine what it's like for a director when you are directing some big project like this that everybody knows about. And I would imagine a lot of people want to be in it. So what is it like for you in terms of when you're in that casting process, how many people are calling you being like, I know the right person for this role? Well, luckily, I mean, quite a few people um, were interested in, and that's a blessing. You know, if you have a piece of material that is this strong, you know, and the three authors are so, so talented that it, it, it is this strong that, um, you know, it, it, it's an embarrassment of riches. And so now what you're doing is what you're casting is you're not, you're not, you're really lucky. You're able to, to look for not only the best person for each part, but you're able to look from at it from a, the standpoint of the ensemble. You know, it's not just it's not just the one person or the it's it's the one and one make three. You know, there's there's each role plus there's the chemistry between the relationship is as important as the character. Sometimes sometimes even more so. So no, it's it's fantastic. You know, the more interest, the better cast you get. And and I I love actors so much. At the end of the day, it's all about them. You know, performing the this beautiful piece of material. So it was great. One of the things that I love about this material is the way it shines a light on uh, mental health. And uh, can you sort of talk about, I feel like in the last few years, the ability to talk about mental health has actually been easier. Like more people are talking about it and the stigma is maybe being a little bit reduced. Uh, What are your, what's your take on this? Um, Yeah, I, I feel that that every time you talk about it, it brings more light to it. You know, whether it's, it's, mental health or it's depression, anxiety or suicide, whatever the, whatever the subject is. And I've been really lucky. And I, I've, I've been very focused in my career to talk about things that sometimes movies don't talk about, you know, but, but to do it, not as like, not preaching, but just to talk about it almost. It's sometimes just matter of factly or emotionally, where you're not trying to be this message person or whatever, you're just trying to tell the story. Um, but to me, the more these things are talked about, the more, the more they become normal. And so often it's the stigma that's the problem. It's not the thing itself. The thing itself, if you just deal with it, it can be dealt with just like anything else. If you broke your arm, you know, you would, you would go to the doctor, you'd get a cast, right? But if the thing that's broken is internal or it's mental or it's invisible, you know, to the naked eye, that's a little harder. So, so, so often, and we all know this, we all have these friends where you, you, you know, sometimes people, what the worst thing that you have to deal with is just someone saying, look, it's come on, it's all in your head, snap out of it. But like, but I can't. 
it's impossible to snap out of. So now what, right? So so I think that, that Dear Evan Hansen um, is part of the solution here. It's part of just talking about things that, that, uh, and that so many of us face. And if we don't face them, then somebody in our family or a friend is, you know, so, so uh, yeah, I, I'm very proud. I'm proud that we were able to talk about this stuff. Oh, I'm super happy you made this film and, and how good it is. Um, uh, things on the stage are a two act structure. A movie is a three act structure. Can you sort of talk about uh, moving it from the stage to the, to the screen and figuring out the three act structure? Yeah, well, th that was something I was I was quite happy about because you know I knew that I had this incredible screenwriter in Stephen Levinson, and he did a lot of TV work. He's done you know uh, certainly a lot of stage work, um, but you know he, he was fairly new to the movie game. Um, he's fairly new to movies uh, at the time, so it was really exciting because he's so intuitively brilliant. So it was really two things that, that I, I said right away. I said. Uh, you know, hey guys, like the intermission is so great in your show, but we can't really do an intermission. So would it be okay to like, just, I would love to just see them take off that cast. I think it'd be really great to kind of like hit a reset button in the story because, you know, the cast then represents the intermission. So it makes it a little more seamless and they were all in and, and it was really fun. And I love Justin and Dan Rummer wrote a wonderful piece of music to accompany it. So I, it was a really great moment. Um, I was excited about that. But the other one was, in terms of the third act and how to make a third act work was, was, you know, I always felt that he should confess, you know, I always felt that it was lovely that Connor's family did not out him and did not expose him to the community. But then I thought, well, is he going to still lie that he was friends with Connor at his 10th high school reunion? It's a, things like these, these questions kept plaguing me. So I threw out to the guys like, Hey, um, would you be willing to have him go on a quest and maybe just come clean? Because if, if the, the, the theme of your show is, you know, be yourself or it's like no hiding, no lying, you know, uh, right now you're you and that's enough, then shouldn't he be able to come clean to the community? And they were all in, but the way they executed it, I thought was perfect. You know, it involved that new song a little closer, which was lovely. And, and the reveal of Connor, um, which obviously you can't talk about. But anyway, it, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I just thought that the search for Connor, you know, coming up with this idea and, and knowing a little bit more about him and then um, Evan coming clean really provided a nice I, uh, third act. Well, I, I do want to specifically, without doing any spoilers on the third act, I love the ending of this movie. Um, what were you, I guess, what was, it's so many people are so um, invested in this material. How, I mean, and the third act is all new. Were you sort of using the new ending as like, did you test it on anyone in terms of, is this going to work for the fans? Or were you sort of like, it works for me and that's, and I know this is enough. No, I, we, we certainly previewed it because, you know, the, the, the opinion of the fans meant a lot to me. I'm one of those fans, you know, I, I love the show. That's why I wanted to make the movie. I didn't, I didn't make, I didn't make the movie because I thought the show was broken. I thought the show was brilliant. And I just, I, I just thought I saw some opportunities, you know, to, to get a little more intimate with the close-ups and using this, you know, that kind of thing. But the third act was again, um, we did preview it and, and the audience seemed to respond really well. You know, the fans of the show seem to love it. It's like they got to see more. You know, things that that may be, um, you know, there's two new songs. That's exciting. You know, they can always people can always go back to the stage show. That, and and I want them to. I think the stage show is amazing. But no, people seem to be very, very open to what we did. And and they knew the reason why we did it. And so, yeah, it's been very, very um, positive. You know, it's also going back to the, maybe the spirit of your question is I'm not the I'm not the kind of director that's like, you know, pleasing me is, eh, you know, I, I don't I don't it's it's I just find that you know, you make movies. I like to make movies because I could write novels. I make movies because I love the collaboration. I love people's uh, opinions. I love um, that sense of camaraderie. It, it makes it fun. I love, I love the, the, the collective experience and I have all these amazing artists around me. Um, you know, these authors who are so brilliant that it's like, why wouldn't I want to, you know, listen to opinions? You know, I, I always felt like I got where I got by, by listening, not by talking. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you've, you've made some excellent films. Uh, clearly, I think you know what you're doing. You might have some talent behind the camera. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> possibly. Um, so Ben is incredible in this movie. 
and he is giving his heart and soul. And the thing that really blew me away was when he is singing and crying at the same time yes. and that cannot be easy as an actor to be delivering that those kind of emotions so can you talk a little bit about scheduling how you wanted to film those kinds of emotional moments with ben knowing you probably can only do it so many takes you know yeah, before sure. there's yeah. nothing left well the one thing i knew this was an early conversation that i had with ben where, where let's say there was a, a scene that required two days of shooting let's say like uh, uh, for forever was one words fail was another. Like, so what I did was I would ask, all right, do you want to sing first or act first? Like, do you, do you need, do you need the, do you need the scene to get to it? Or do you just want to kind of get it? Cause I, I, you know, get it not out of the way because he wanted, but like, what's going to help you calibrate emotionally what you, what you intend to do and whatever it is he said, that's how I designed the shooting because, uh, and that went for all the actors. It's like, if I was able to, let's say I, I could feel intuitively that, that it, you know, not Ben so much, but like another actor or actress um, was a little bit nervous about the, about the singing. Well, if the other's days work, if the nerves would help that kind of subconsciously, then I would, I would, you know, schedule it at the end of the day. If, however, I felt like it was distracting to the person, like, cause they were so nervous, um, you know, because singing in front of a whole crew just staring at you, knowing that it, to the crew it's a cappella, it's terrifying. It's very, very, very revealing. And so I would use I would use it that way. But ultimately, I'm a very pro actor director. I love actors very much. Like some, most of my friends growing up, actors, and I know what they go through, and I I know in, intuitively what they need. And so for me, whatever they need, that's what they're going to get. You know. Um, ben, especially because he did, as you said, he had to go to these places and just, I mean, physiologically speaking, I still don't, I saw him do it 10 feet away. I don't know how he did it. I, I it is a remarkable, remarkable, just again, just physically, I don't know how you cry. Like when I cry and I do, usually I clench my, my throat somehow he cries and it opens up and then he belts and then he cries again. And then it's, it, it's delicate and it's all authentic and it's all true it's 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 an amazing thing to watch oh no he's incredible like i mean there it's uh yeah i mean i can only say like there's no other ad you know what i mean like every yeah. adjective you want to use for his performance it's applicable he, he I, just i couldn't agree more yeah so, oh wait your phone rang too we're it, it just did yeah I, but you know it was a spam you know what i mean it was oh, one, one it. of those right. you know somehow they think you know if i use your prefix as well. You're, I, I don't. Oh, I know. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yep. Uh, mine now says spam, uh, spam call on the okay. caller ID. So, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. What was you obviously couldn't include all the songs from the stage, and I'm mm -hmm. curious, what was the song that made that came the closest to making the film before you know, but it ended up being cut? Well, you know, you you'd be surprised to hear that none of them that got cut came close to being in the movie. Uh, honest to God. It, it was, we felt it like from a very early, it was like the three authors, two producers, myself, and we sat there um, uh, in the in this conference room. We just kept talking over and over about, you know, to like, okay, well, what is the movie? What's the movie if we include, and does anybody have a map? Which, which I love, by the way, I love that song. But we're like, well, now the movie's starting more, more uh, objectively. It's not in Evan's point of view. So the singing is different. It's more presentational versus waving, which is the thought in his head. So we all agreed, you know, it's better to start with waving because if you start with waving, then, then the grammar of what the musical numbers means is, you know, it's the noise in his head. Okay, I know what that means. Or um, uh, to break in a glove, which is a lovely song, but knowing instinctively in that stage of the show or, or in the movie, I was like, you know, we just came out of this incredibly emotional thing with You Will Be Found, and we don't have the intermission the way they do on Broadway. Without the intermission, it, trust me, if there was no intermission, to break in a glove, I don't think would, would, would even maybe even exist on stage. You need that palate cleanser, and we didn't have the time because we're moving forward. So that felt like, and yet the scene was so beautiful that Stephen wrote this great version of kind of what the song was, um, you know, that, that did it, 
that that kind of achieve the same dramatical, um, the same dramatic uh, end, just much more quickly, which helps us get to only us a little faster, which would serve the overall arc of the piece um, in a great way. Uh, in terms, of, so that that's the answer to your question. The other two songs um, it were one was essentially replaced, and others were replaced. You know. Uh, disappear became anonymous ones. So it was kind of a win-win. Not only did it eliminate the, the Connor as kind of Evan's alter ego, which works great on stage, but in a real bedroom, it would, pro- it would have felt like a ghost, you know? So we talked about that. So it became more of Alana's moment. So that was very, very, that was a win-win. And then Good For You um, became a series of scenes. But again, just, we always looked at the dramatic structure. Does the song ultimately serve the story directly? If the answer is yes, it stays. If it doesn't, and we and it's achieving the same thing, like Alana still confronts him. Okay, so she confronts him twice now. Well, you don't need to confront him twice. Let, let's, let's move forward and let's just be very efficient and very lean. And because we knew also the difference between stage and film, not to get too granular on it, but if you're, if you're interested, kind of what happens is, is the minute you add a close up to Cynthia Murphy and you feel her grief that much more intimately, well, right away, it's different than the stage show. Once you add those close ups, once you feel the mother's grief, once you feel the stepfather's grief um, in a different way, it just, you know, it's just more emotional. By, dis- by nature, you, you can't avoid it. Knowing that we're like, well, we can't go two hours and 40 minutes of this feeling because the audience will burn out. You know, there's like, as it is, I mean, I think I forget the final running time. You know, there were times when I would watch it as the director and I would just be like, I can't do it anymore. You know, and that's and that's with, with making these changes and getting leaner with it. Just, I was always trying to be respectful of the audience, what they're going through. Um, and I didn't want to, um, I don't know, to me, to me, there's there's a bond that you make with the audience where you're not asking, you know, you're not being, I guess, exploitative, I suppose is the right word, where you're just like, here, here I'm going to present this story the way that, that we feel it, the way we see it, and, and you can make the final determination. As a fan sure. of your work, do you know or have ideas of what you might be directing next? Um, there are a few, a few irons in the fire, uh, nothing concrete yet. Um, but everything I'm involved with, I'm really excited about kind of going back to your original question of like, I think, you know, I'm really excited about the next five, 10 years. You know, there's a lot of things I'm very excited about and Dear Evan Hansen really brought me, you know, because it's the first thing I, I, I directed that I didn't write. Um, and I, I loved it. I, I, I felt very, um, comfortable in this position. And so I think now, because I don't have to write everything, um, I can make a lot more films. So I'm very excited to, to move forward in it. Yeah, I need you making more movies. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it very much. I, I'm, I'm very sincere when I say that. You are a very good filmmaker. I appreciate um, it. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, my friend. All right, until the next time. Later. Later.